back here on the Rich Eisen Show. The reporter of MMAfighting.com and the host of the MMA Hour podcast, the MMA Beat, is Ariel Hawani. How are you, Ariel? So here I am coming on your show, Rich, and you're going to take a shot at me in the first 10 seconds? You know what? You know what? Here, here it is. That's just me. That's me working ah. it out, my own anger and angst at the Knicks. And you... And and as you know, I keep telling you, just move on, turn the page. I know, but I you know. Can't. I, honestly, the season ended for me like two months ago. Once Porzingis got injured, I, I haven't been able to watch a game. It's very depressing. So I appreciate you reminding me that they're <laughs> actually still playing. My apologies. Uh, so let's let's uh, let's hit what what went down in Brooklyn. What is the headline coming out of out of uh, UFC oh. two twenty three, Ariel? In your mind. This is no hyperbole, um, Rich, but that was the craziest week in the history of this sport, and there's no close second. I'm still having a hard time processing what happened between Thursday around 1.30 p.m. Eastern time and Friday around 8 p.m., because the thing is, there were two gigantic stories happening and unfolding simultaneously, and both were kind of unfolding in the worst way possible for the UFC. So on the one hand... You have the Conor McGregor situation where uh, McGregor flies in from Dublin, uh, enters the Barclays Center, uh, tries to find Khabib Nurmagomedov, who's in the, the headline headlining act for UFC 223, uh, finds him in the loading dock of the Barclays Center. He's in a bus. Uh, McGregor and his friends, around 10 of them, attack the bus, throw a bunch of things at the bus, like, like, like chairs and a dolly. Um, windows are broken. Two fighters who are competing or scheduled to compete at 223 get injured as a result of, you know, shattered glass hitting them. They get ruled out of the fight. McGregor and his team obviously don't get on the bus. They run away later on that evening. McGregor turns himself in. His friend also turns himself in. So that thing is all unfolding, and it's as surreal as it gets. And then come Friday morning, the UFC has this very important main event, Khabib Nurmagomedov against Max Holloway, which is the main event that was put together on, at that point, four days' notice because the original – um, you know, interim champion Tony Ferguson got injured uh, last week while tripping over a cable while doing interviews um, <laughs> on, on Thursday of last week. Like that ended up not even being the craziest part of this whole you know situation. The, so Max Holloway steps up the featherweight champion, and then he can't make weight. He gets ruled out of the fight. The UFC calls upon three other fighters for various reasons. They can't take the fight, and then finally they settle on a guy named Ally Quinta, who's from Long Island, local Rocky story. He takes the fight on 24 hours' notice. Connor's been showing up in court. I mean, the thing was just so surreal, Rich. I can't even put it to words. I'm still having a hard time digesting it all. So if you're asking what the headline is, I guess the biggest story to the masses is what happened, you know, to, to Connor. But it's really these two sort of stories happening simultaneously and us trying to cover them both. That's what I'll remember from last week. Well, I mean, and I, I'm, I'm trying to pick up what Dana White is putting down in the video that we saw first blush that was put out um where i guess he was being interviewed by somebody in the bowels of barclay center just after this incident with the bus had happened and he looked uh beaten upset and saying that he didn't want to do business with uh conor mcgregor right now and he used the phrase right now three different times and then later on on the weekend he's saying that uh that other sports have seen a lot worse so i'm kind of trying to figure out what the spin is on this do you think uh, what happened with Conor McGregor has damaged the sport in some way uh, permanently, Ariel? So I'll, I'll first address um, your first point because it's a great point. I thought that Dana White, Thursday, Friday, handled this as well as possible. He's in a tough spot. We recognize that. They're not cutting Conor McGregor. He is the biggest star in the history of this sport. So he often has to choose his words wisely when it comes to McGregor. And I thought he did a great job of that. I mean, he, he was really upset. He said all the right things, disgusted, all this stuff. I mean, it was very clear that he was putting his foot down, I thought. And then come Saturday, as you said, at the post-fight press conference, it seemed as though, you know, he, he kind of took a step back. And as you said, he was saying, oh, in other sports we've seen worse. I didn't think that that was as good of a job. I mean, if you're gonna if you're if you're gonna say this is the most disgusting act in the history of the sport and we're gonna deal with this all that stuff, you kind of have to stick with that for at least a little more than 48 hours. And it seemed as though time healed that wound. He he said that he spoke to Connor and they're in a good place. Maybe there was an agreement. I don't know for sure, but it sounded much better than the first time he said he spoke to him. Agreement maybe that they wouldn't you know uh, speak very publicly negatively about this. I thought it was very interesting that they released the footage of what happened. The UFC released the footage. Now, I know there's a lot of people who would say, oh, you know, that's because this was planned. That's because, you know, the UFC was behind it. No, that's not the case. I, I, I think that the UFC 
felt like they needed to put the cards out on the table. But in doing so, they're kind of incriminating him a little more. So I thought that that would make things worse between Connor and the UFC. Um, he says that they're in a good spot. We'll see what happens. Connor, Connor kind of goes to the beat of his own drum. Um, but, but like, if you're expecting, you know, Connor to come back and fight now in May or June, he, he can't, he's in, he's involved in this situation. I, I think at the end of the day, they'll figure it out. Um, thankfully no one was seriously hurt, but th- there's a long road ahead here because, you know, there's, there's the next hearing on June 14th, a bunch of fighters were affected. They may sue him as well. Mm. Who knows about the employees who were hurt? So there's all kinds of things up in the air, but it was very interesting, at least to me that, uh, Dana had, softened his stance. I didn't expect him to do that 48 hours later. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.